New music execs desire to be the king of their own kingdom, but the problem is they lack the understanding of the true structure of how this industry is built based on the contracts, all right, and also the game of attention. That's what we're playing here. It's just a, it's the world of attention. Now, when you're getting started, it's probably just you or a partner, and it's not going to be enough to actually push this car down the road. We're going to need a team of folks, right? Now, once you realize this, you can remain in a possible defeated position because I can see it coming with two people. You're not going to make it, right? Or you can rise to the occasion and then make some adjustments. Now, without the rules of the game, the industry structure, the rules of attention, and a solid team, you can't monopolize, and that's going to be our keyword for today, on the industry and your footing in it for the borrowed amount of time that you're going to need. But we're going to address all this coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham. And yes, I've been in your shoes because when I got started with my record label, I started with two people. It was me and the artist. It wasn't a good duo, right? It was a good duo for us creatively but not to make the business float on down the stream, okay? I crashed this thing, you know the backstory, in two years. It wasn't until I got with another team of folks that made me realize that there were going to be four or five people that I would need to make this thing work, okay? And even with that, there are a lot of levels of stress and, 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 and conflicting ideas that happen within the team, but it's going to take about five people to work, but what I want to stress to you is how we're actually going to monopolize your career and build this dynasty, so check it out. All right, let's play a game of Monopoly. In the game, the core action is to acquire real estate, appreciate the real estate, make a fortune, and bankrupt the other players. In the music game, creating a blockade of the market by attention for a borrowed amount of time is the key to securing the bag more than others and exiting with that attention and money without losing your property to a mortgage call a record deal. I'm going to break this down, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the game of Monopoly and I'm going to show you your journey throughout your music career, especially when you're getting started. Okay? I need you to listen. I need you to take notes. Check it out. Now, here's step one. We want to buy the Baron property as your foundation. I'm going to get more into the foundation when I talk about the 60-day record label that you see off to the right-hand corner later in the video. What we got to do is we got to select the matching market for who you are, okay? For your personality, for your artistry, all of that stuff. We want to establish three businesses. Now, I'm going to hold on a second because I know if you're just getting started, you only need one. But the divisions will be this, music, live entertainment, and merchandise. Ultimately, that's the three businesses. We want to buy the LLCs. If you're just starting, you only need one. If you're just starting, uh, let it be known, you only need one LLC. You don't need to do all the LLCs, all right? I know y'all love that LLC video I did, but you don't need all of them. You can't even maintain all of them, all right? You need to secure contracts to secure the intellectual property, and you need to develop the brand identity. All of this is going to be done on the Barron Foundation. You have no houses here. This is Atlantic Avenue. So we, we're kind of in the bougie, bourgeoisie neighborhood over here. Once we have that, once we have the foundation built, you know, once we have the land purchased, if you will, we've secured out a spot where we're going to start the work, then we can move on. Now, we got to put one house on it. This is level one appreciation. Appreciation may be an advanced word to you, but all it means is that we've appreciated, which we means we built up the property, the barren land, to have one house on it more than just nothing. Okay, so we appreciated the land, if you will. Our intellectual property is our land. So we produced one album. We secured our sound recordings, which is important. This is our intellectual property. We secured our compositions. You know we can do that under form PA. And then the artwork as well. You can put the sound recordings and artwork for an album on one form. But if not, this will be the work of a visual arts right here. Uh, now, and then we begin to tour. Now, when you're just getting started, you're going to be in the 300 to 500 seat range. But for some of you all who may be, have, have, you know, you probably did your thing on social media and you built up attention first. You can be in the 500 to 2500 seater range if you really know how to move product. We're also going to develop some print on demand merch, POD merch. This is very important. All of this is happening in level one, and you're going to be doing a lot of work at this stage to build up the houses on the block that you purchased, okay? Well, on the street that you purchased with all the matching colors. Once this happens, 
Level two becomes easier because the rinse and repeat process allows you to take the new connections that you worked so hard to get and level them up. And now all the connections you're not going to take with you, but now you know the connections that you need to have and the people that you need to hire and fire after you leave level one. But it's going to take so much to appreciate the land at level one. And I just want to just want to say, be prepared for this work. All right. But just follow me here. This is our first album. It took a lot of work to get here. Yes, people do listen to albums. It all depends on how you promote the thing. Everybody doesn't need to strictly promote singles all the time. Now, let's go to level two. You want to put two houses on your property. Producing the second album. Securing sound recordings, compositions, and artwork. You're developing better merch. You're touring 2,500 to 5,000 seater venues. And you're developing your first brand deals. Okay, Pause for a second and let us go back. In the beginning, I said music, live entertainment, and merchandise. If you're playing the game of Monopoly, those three will make up, you know, the three spaces that you would have. I forgot what's here. I think Atlantic Avenue is somewhere in. I forgot the rest of the ones in the yellow, but whatever. These three properties are what you're building up. You're putting houses on these three properties. Music, live entertainment, and merchandise because that's what you're selling, okay? So now we're at the second house. We're starting to win the game. People know us now. We're working hard, but doors are opening much easier than they were before at level one. We're rinsing, rinsing and repeating the process. And then we go on to level three. We're producing the third album. Remember, at each step of the way, we're getting more intellectual property along the way. We're touring 5,000 to 10,000 seater venues. And we're establishing longer partnerships with brands by licensing your name. At this point, back in level two, the first brand deals are coming via social media. Okay. But in level three, it's not just social media anymore. This comes from, you know, collaborations with brands on products. It also comes from collaborations with brands in commercials and everything. Okay. So you, at this point, you can start securing your exit plan. Now, let me stress this again. If you're just getting started, this is probably the point at which you're going to pop off. Album number three from an independent scale. If you remember my video that I did on public consciousness and the line that you have to cross before the public really begins to know you, this is where it is right here. It's like your third mixtape or your third independent EP or whatever you have you that you're, you're making. Okay, three of them suckers. Heavy promotion on all of them. The only thing that might change is the establishing the longer partnerships with brands by licensing your name. That might not be available just yet. That's a justice. Securing your exit plan is like this. Securing the exit plan could be the record deal. Because if that is the case, then we're going to have to go back to square one on level one and do it all over again for another three albums. But if you're independent... And you're saying, hey, look, man, we've gotten to a place where things are popping off for us. It's cool. We're good. We did a lot of work. And we might not be in 10,000 seaters. We might be doing 15,000 seaters. Cool. All right. Let's figure out a way that we can do more on the next project. But we need to also think about an exit because I'm going to show you what's going to happen in a minute. Use this album to stabilize your catalog and brand. Four albums secure your legacy in the game. At four, all of the sampling fans and bandwagoners are preparing to leave. Therefore, you should have prepared an exit plan already or a plan to decrease your budgets and team and prepare them for an extended career. At this point, what I'm saying is everybody who came with you from the first album has now moved away. They're like, all right, you're changing. You're not the same as what it was. And it still doesn't have that same feeling or a piece of the original that you did. I'm ready to jump ship now. So this causes a decrease in the attention that you're going to get from the further uh, from the music that you're going to further put out. And at that point, you have to figure out how am I going to adjust so that I can keep the attention there. And every artist has to go through this. It normally happens at four. And that's just what it is. You get what I'm saying? You had Chance the Rapper doing Coloring Book at three. And then from there, the next album was like, eh, it's okay. And then now he had to pivot. Chance still has his fans, but the albums aren't hitting as much as Coloring Book did. 
Of course, he's on tour now. He's getting ready to do this big tour, and hopefully this next project will be amazing. But every artist has to go through this. This is the pivot point. Because once we put four houses on this and we solidify the career, here comes the hotel. This could be another album. Or this could be a Greatest Hits album. Now, you might say, well, Case, nobody really does Greatest Hits albums no more. I know they don't. This could be a situation where you do a compilation album. This could be a, a repackaging type of situation that you do, right? Where you can begin to sell the other albums as nostalgia packs. Whatever it is, you got to put this together in, in a way where either this is going to be a new album or a digital deluxe nostalgia pack type of situation where people will buy this. You know what I mean? This is going to serve as your fifth project. If this is the fifth album, right, you're definitely going to see your sales decline because you have to get new fans at this point. You just do. Everybody's not sticking around. The sound has changed. The producers, engineers, marketers... Even technology has changed by the fifth project. And this is usually the exit. Casey, how did you come up with all of these properties? Good question. It's because in a typical record deal, this is what you're going to sign for. They're going to bet on four. Because they know that by the fifth one, change is going to happen. This is when you make the exit. That's why we developed the exit plan at album three. Because we knew at album four, sales were going to diminish and people were going to leave. So we needed to be able to jump ship in a clean, secure fashion. The whole time we were going through this monopolization of the block, we were taking on all of the intellectual property and we were securing that and owning it. At every step, every step we were doing, sound recordings, compositions, and artwork. Every step of the way, okay? Even our merchandise designs was intellectual property. We were securing all of that along the way. So you can see how owning all of that helps you win. I might need to do an example with Chance Rapper because he really executed this. Him, him and his team executed this flawlessly. Okay. So at this point, it's time to exit. Now, forming a cartel or monopoly on the block by developing the block. What you want to do is you want to secure three more artists in the same manner. Now, it might not be artists that you secure. Let me explain. What you can do is everybody that worked with you, you can either sign them, you can either advance them on publishing as the albums get older and maybe they need some money and they want to do a publishing deal. You can say, hey, look, keep your publishing. And if I have something down the line and you haven't sold out, I would love to acquire your publishing or at least advance you some royalties and we do a 10 year or 15 year turn deal on your publishing, right? Or I can just buy you out. That way you can go back and secure all the albums, all right? Everybody won't agree to, to selling out their publishing on all of these projects. They just won't because they'll get so used to the money. But some people will. They might need a hot thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to get them in the game to get them going, and it might be good for them if they could do that. So the writers, the engineers, anybody who had points, if you can buy them out at this point because you have money now as an artist, this would be the time to do it. Okay, or you could secure three more artists and build the same process again, which is a very difficult process. But this is how you begin to repeat the process all the way back down the other side of the board. You get what I'm saying? I know I'm having high level conversations here, but I know y'all like to talk about money. Now, is it possible to be the boss when you're the artist and still maintain your creative mind? In short, no. Um, but you'll have to learn how to channel your creativity into designing a logistics plan that can get everybody paid, including you. Um, so it's going to take a toll on you. So that's why you're going to want to rely on your manager and your team. That's why I said it's going to take a team. Yeah, you can come in as a boss and say, I want to do this, 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 and this. And then you delegate this stuff to the team and they'll go get it done for you. It's kind of like putting in an order at a restaurant. That's really what you're going to have to do in order to keep your creative processes and juices going. Okay. Now, that seems hard to do when I have other things going on. I know it is. That's why you need to rely on the team for the business stuff, like I just said. Well, is it possible to stay independent and use this model? Yes, but you as an artist will have to understand that selling out to a record deal will not be your benefit, will not be to your benefit to monopolize. 
it will be to your detriment. Okay, pause for a second. Yes, a record label can advance your career significantly, but you got to look at how much leverage you're going to end up losing. So if the record label does come along and you're utilizing this plan to get started, remember I said back at house number three, this is when the deal would probably kick in. They might start shopping around right here or, or like knocking at your door on the second album. But this is really when they're going to come and knocking. And you might actually think about doing the deal around album number three. Um, it all depends if you can keep all of this and they don't dig into your back catalog. All right. They don't want to do a deal for the back catalog. Uh, because you've gained so much attention over the course of three albums. Remember, I said the record label knows that by the time you get to three, you're, you're primed for a deal. But they also want to check the amount of attention that you've garnered. Because if you've gotten too much, then they know it might not be too much skin in the game left on four and five. You see what I'm saying? And if you lose leverage on four and five, and you lost leverage here due to the deal... It's going to be to your detriment. But if you're able to keep all of the intellectual property, the merch ideas, compositions, the artwork, the sound recording for all three of these projects, we're in the game. We're in the game. Oh, almost gave it away. Now, how are we going to start with the Baron Foundation that I said back at the beginning of the video? The 60-day record label course. A framework to establish your record label in a perfect 60-day sequence. Learn how to set up your LLC and bank account flawlessly for base level anonymity so all the fans and people looking for you won't try to come find you through public records. And then you're going to set up your records and publishing division to collect domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15%. This is important because in the beginning, 15% is expensive to you, but at the same time, you don't want to do a deal through certain collection agencies out here. Hint, hint, you know who they are who take 15%. You don't want to do this deal too early. If you're seeking a deal by the time you get to that third independent album, you want to keep yourself clean for that. Now, utilize the contract templates that are in this course to get you in the game right away so you understand the legal ramifications and parameters of the music industry and how it actually works. What's covered is BMI, ASCAP, Sound Exchange, and MLC Music Reports, the Harry Fox Agency, Luminate, AllMusicISRC.com, Music Distributors, and much more, plus other templates are included in this course in addition to the contract ones. Okay, it's just two seventy five, five payments of fifty five bucks. If you want to do it that way, I got you covered. At the end of the day, I need you to develop a strategy. Okay, and we can do, you can do that with me if you book a call with me, and everything's all good. You can do this before you start the course or after. It doesn't make a difference. There are so many people calling me. I love you all for calling me and getting your stuff together. Now, grab the free stuff below if this is your first time watching the video. But this is what success looks like. Develop your business faster due to the fact that you understand the structure we just went over. If you have this team, it's going to help you build even faster. And if you plan better with the detailed contract that's inside the 60-day record label course, then the money flows smoother because you understand what's going on, allowing you to, un allowing you to eliminate unnecessary guesswork. Maintaining your empire by running a successful operation is what success will look like for you. But I know you're probably right here and you're continuing to operate with one to two people. Obviously, we got to change that. We got to get the team together. We got to put some people in place so they can help us get these processes done, especially if you're an artist, especially if you're an artist, because you don't want to wander around in the wilderness and ultimately become bitter about the industry. Ultimately, when we started this video, this is probably a concept that you probably never even heard of or never even thought to think of. But from my contractual knowledge and me understanding the business, this is what I saw. And I was like, it is just like the game. It is played just like the game of Monopoly. Now, clearly, if you're going to stay at the two-person team, you're probably not going to win. You're probably not going to get down the stream. But if you can adjust some things to make all of that work, clearly, as you can see, it's going to take more people. Then you can move from where you are now as a little engine that could going down the track to a giant, like, modern-day diesel locomotive. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you're going to win this game, man. It's going to take a team and it's going to take a plan to really make what I just talked about work. But you can transform this thing from where you are now to where you want to be in this high level success that you dream of as a music exec. All right, music money makers. If you make music, you should always make money. Jump into the 60 day record label course. Download the free stuff below. Make sure you comment and like and subscribe down below as well. All right. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com and I'll see you next time. Peace.